Welcome to Recently Logged, where we almost forgot to record again, <laughs> and that's why we're late. This is literally like, an well, 45 minutes before we were supposed to release. Yeah. And uh, we were just sitting around not doing much of anything. Hey, I was, do- I was writing scripts. Wow, okay. I well... Was- I was sitting around. I was doing putting work. in the work because I was waiting for my boss <laughs> to reply to my messages. So, um, yeah. So because we were very underprepared, we're not going to do an very episode <laughs> about a specific movie. We're going to do a what we watched episode, and for another reason, because in the last like six days, I think I've logged <laughs> twenty-eight things, which is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> so the story behind this is uh, we don't have like we're we're not subscribed to HBO Max, uh, but we got a free thirty-day trial of HBO Max, and there's yeah. a lot of movies that we haven't seen on HBO Max that we wanted to. So we've just kind of been sitting around the past couple of days. Uh, watching movies yeah it's pretty much like just all that we've been doing is watching movies which i'm not complaining i've really liked it and i've gotten to see a lot of new movies but indeed there's only been there's only been like oh my gosh there's actually only been three rewatches in the past six days i have one two three four five five rewatches for me There you go. But I watched... Yeah, you I've, watched... I've seen some things before that you haven't, and I watched some different things from you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I guess we can go ahead and get into it as a bit of a preface, preface, preface. as you will. A preface. A preface, okay. Um, for those who follow me on Letterboxd, you might have noticed that I have stopped reading films. This, this is for <laughs> Micah does not agree with my reasons Boo. for not stopping rating my like films that I watch um, I, in a numerical way anymore. I still write reviews for them and everything. I get, I get it in I get it on paper, but I don't get it in practice. Um, it just doesn't seem practical. But I will still be assigning like numerical scores for the sake of like just summarizing my thoughts on it at the end, because that's really all review ratings are good for anyway. Just summarizing how you feel about it, pretty much. Yeah. But that, that just, I, I've stopped rating films, so some of these ratings are going to be me coming up with them, like, as we're talking about them, so. Mm-hmm. Anyways. Anyway. What did we watch? What did we okay, watch? so we're going to pick up. Uh, right we after. Watched, we watched Deathly Hollows on the 3rd, which yes. we just did an episode about. Uh, Indeed. But then we also logged this next thing on the 3rd. <laughs> I don't remember when that was specifically on the 3rd. Oh, no, it was that, it was that, like, afternoon, so, after we'd already yeah. finished. Uh, we watched Treasure Planet. Hey yo. This was not on HBO Max. <laughs> this was this was not a rewatch. This is our first time ever yeah. seeing it. And uh, for those of you who don't know, this was one of the most like underperforming mainstream Disney animated movies when it came out. Which you know That's not surprising. <laughs> is not surprising. Like it's coming out of being a treasure uh, a Treasure Island adaptation, which I just don't think Treasure Island was ever that popular. What, yeah, well, like, was it ever that popular? like Like, it's a good book, but, like, I don't think it was ever, like, popular in a way that would get people to go watch a movie about Maybe it. Maybe back in, like, the 40s or something. Yeah, I don't there know. There were a lot of Treasure Island adaptations back then. Uh, wow, I just went... Because <laughs> I tried to say something, but then stopped. Wow. Uh, but also, just, and I won't do this on everyone, but I just think it's it's an interesting story about this one. Um, uh, Ron Clements and John Musker, uh, you probably know those names if you're familiar with Disney. They were the directors of stuff like Aladdin and The Little Mermaid and Hercules and stuff like that. And they kept on going back to the Disney executives and being like, all right, we have this movie called Treasure Planet that we want to do. (laughs) And then they kept on saying, come out with another one, come out with another movie, come out with another movie. And then they finally finally let them do this after hercules didn't do well <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh so I don't know. it's interesting overall i wasn't blown away but it wasn't like it wasn't bad by any stretch yeah i just it wasn't like anything too groundbreaking to me you can tell that the people who made it cared about it but yeah it just 
didn't offer much to engage me most I think, of the time. I think the best part of this is just the source material. Yeah, the- <laughs> I was about to say, the stuff that's good in Treasure Island is good in this. Yeah, and it's just, like, pretty much this entire thing, like, the only good out of it, and, like, good, good, like, it's not bad. Yeah, but, exactly. Like, the only good specific thing i would say is just the relationship between jim and silver but that's always the only <laughs> good thing about the story really ouch okay listen i've read the book like <laughs> roasting times, treasure so island I a literary classic oh my gosh <laughs> i gave it i gave it three stars i also gave it three stars uh yeah oh yeah also they they combined it was one of the first movies to combine 2d animation and 3d animation yeah. and they used a lot of new technology in that it looks it looks odd a lot of the time in this, but like not like distractingly odd. Yeah. All right. Next, we watch. Yes. M. What did we watch? It's just a- the letter M. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bro. This is like a 1931 uh, German movie. Heck yeah, it is. Uh, it's so good. It was actually, <laughs> you know, it was actually pretty good. It wasn't great, <laughs> but it was pretty good. Wow. I'm glad glad you feel that way. Um, I, this was not my first time watching this. I had seen it before. Yeah, um, this was my first time. And I, I had been trying to get Micah to watch it because I figured he'd probably enjoy it. And I did. Um, and yeah, it's, it's really fantastic. The um, editing for the time. Okay, yeah, there's the thing. Is the editing. absolutely fantastic. Oof. And the editing. The pacing of the movie is really good too. Yeah, I think it's, um, it's 117 minutes, but, which isn't like super long. No, no. That's it, like an hour and some odd minutes but you don't feel the runtime at all yeah no it it's fantastic i actually can't believe how old this thing is with how great everything like uh editing wise is and structuring i think i think the highlight is the editing and i think my least favorite part about it is just some like direction decisions here and there i could see that like the story i like and the editing is amazing Ooh, the cinematography is really good as well yeah so I gave it four stars. It wasn't quite up there for me. I, I gave it four and a half. I, I really enjoyed it. I don't think I could see giving it five, but it's pretty close. All right, now here's where here's where me and him split for a second. Oh, um, did you watch some stuff one, without me? <laughs> one, good old, one good old morning. Uh, <laughs> one good old morning. We wake up, and my, oh mom, my mom is scrolling through good old Disney+. Plus. Oh, yeah. And we watched Minutemen. Uh, it's got that. It's got the guy from Good Luck Charlie in it. Oh boy! Uh, but it's it's the uh, guy. <laughs> it's not very good. Most Yikes. Disney Channel, especially like older Disney Channel stuff like this. I mean, new Disney Channel. Don't get me wrong. It's trash. Uh, <laughs> wow. But I don't think their movies besides like High School Musical were ever good. Uh, I gave it two stars. And then we watched... From what I saw of it, that's probably what I would have given it. Then, I saw, like, half a scene one time. And then we watched a slightly newer one, uh, How to Build a Better Boy, which Oof. was worse. And <laughs> it didn't make much sense. And I kind of hated it. And I gave it one star. <laughs> and then, what did we watch, Shreddy? What did we watch? I'll tell you what we watched, Micah. We watched the Studio Ghibli classic film from 1988. <laughs> My neighbor Totoro. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh, I just peeked at the microphone. Oh my gosh! <laughs> uh, sorry about that. <laughs> um, was this the first day we had HBO? Yeah, this was the first. Yeah, day. yeah. Okay, uh, okay. And uh, this was a rewatch for me, but I had watched it like five years before. <laughs> like I, I didn't remember too much. Like I remembered the movie. I had very like good memory of the movie, but I didn't like remember the movie oh yeah I, I watched it with him a while ago and i didn't remember it hardly at all so yeah uh, watching doesn't... watching this again was very nice he doesn't have much of a memory <laughs> of movies uh totoro doesn't do much but it doesn't try to do much it's it's so it's such a small story it's such a small movie and it works so well yeah no it does it's kind of crazy actually like like on almost, paper, almost zero happens. On in this paper, movie. this movie doesn't make much sense, but when you're watching it, it like, mm, yeah, no, cinema, it's, Micah. It's good, but it's very like, like it's very odd. Like if you tried to describe the plot of Totoro <laughs> it's to like somebody, what happens in Totoro. they'd be like, "What the heck? That sounds awful." <laughs> um, but it's really good. It's uh, really good. Yeah, I was about to say this marked the beginning of our. Uh, our Ghibli marathon kind of thing that we have been doing. Yeah. Um, 
and Let's you know see. what? It was it was really good to watch. I, I gave it four stars. Um, um, if I would have rated it, I probably would have given it four and a half. Yeah, I don't know. I was considering giving it four and a half, but I don't know. As much as like, yeah, the story is still good, even though it's small. It was kind of like meh, meh for me. Should I should I give what I watched a shout out like <laughs> the same day? <laughs> you can you can give it a shout out. All right, all right. Uh, I watched this and so did Micah, but he didn't log it. Uh, I don't log short. It was an 11 minute British thing called Big World in a Small Garden, and it was about this guy who had set up this ridiculously complicated uh, he camera inv- he rig. He invented a camera rig <laughs> for with, looking uh, at insects in his garden. Yeah, he used like microscope lenses and everything, and uh, it's it's insane. He, he has it's like amazing electronically footage. controlled to get it right up next to the bugs. And yeah, it's he's very, got like this, cool. he's got his little viewer, and then he's got two little <laughs> sticks he's that he navigates. <laughs> and he navigates this tiny little camera with. But yeah, no. If you if you get the chance, it's on HBO Max. It's really cool oh, yeah, if you're into camera rigging or cameras or in general or bugs. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> then then on the sixth, uh, I guess we'll do because I think yeah I think we watched that first. I just didn't you log didn't, it. I guess. Oh, you didn't log it. Cause wow. Because I, I didn't really watch oh, okay. it. Okay. Um. Oh yeah. You were you didn't even come in till like halfway through it, right? No, I was. Well, no, I thought I was there the whole time, oh, but okay. I was, I was, I was, uh, I was on the PlayStation. All right, we watched a very, very iconic film, I think, at this point. No, it is <laughs> from the nineteen twenties, uh, Safety, Safety Last, Last, which I didn't know what to expect going into this because I haven't seen too many uh, films from like that era, and it was really good. Like it was surprisingly very, very funny. Which I don't know. Most of the time when I watch older films. And something's supposed to be funny. I'm like, oh, that's supposed to be funny. Like you can tell, but I usually don't laugh. But this this had me laughing. Yeah, um, I didn't watch a whole lot of it. I was actually playing on the PlayStation at the time. <laughs> but for the stuff that I did watch, it was actually like surprisingly funny. <laughs> yeah, the only the only complaint I would have with it is actually um, the part where he's actually climbing the building goes on for like forever. <laughs> yeah. But the special effects during that part are like so seamless. It's insane. For, for the time, it was, like, actually, it still looks really good to this day. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. All right. Then on the sixth... Oh, wait. Sixth. What, would you, would you, what would you rate that? Safety last, I would probably rate four. All right. Probably four. <laughs> four. <laughs> four. <laughs> Dang it, Ravi. <laughs> okay. Uh, what did you watch, Michael? Then I watched The Peanut Butter Falcon again. The Peanut uh, Butter Falcon not, again? This was not on HBO Max. No, it's not. Uh, but this, you should go watch it anyway. This is on Hulu right now. Very good movie. Uh, I don't know, man. This is just one of like the most, I guess, feel good movies you can watch. Was that was that from last year? Yeah, it was from yeah, last yeah. year. Um, it was one of my favorites from last year. I was really excited to watch it again. It's probably the only Shia LaBeouf role I've seen that I've actually liked. This is um, the this is the like if someone asked me what the epitome of guys being dudes is I would I would point right? them to this movie. This is guys being dudes. <laughs> guys it really dudes. is. I don't know. It's such a good movie. You should watch it. It's a good time. Yeah. It's it's a really cool story and yeah. <laughs> Michael's like yeah. I give it four and a half stars. Michael's like uh peanut butter falcon. It's good. Go watch it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Then what did we we watch? Rebby? We we we. we. <laughs> the hour, <laughs> hour. <laughs> okay, uh, we watched yet another uh, pre two thousands Ghibli movie, uh, Porco Russo. Heck yeah! Qu- heck yeah! <laughs> it was the first time either of us watched it, and it was pretty darn good. And the "I'd rather be a pig than a fascist" line still hits, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather be a pig than a fascist. <laughs> so yeah, uh, no. Uh, what what did you think, Micah? Just um, generally. Well, what's her face was one of my favorite characters I've seen in the Ghibli movie. I still don't know how to pronounce her name. Good though. old what's her face. Of it's, course, it's spelled F I O. How do you say that? <laughs> it's like Fio. I don't know. Yeah, Fio. That's how they always All pronounced right, it. Fio. Then she's one of my favorite characters. Uh, like that I've seen in a Ghibli movie, but it was actually really good. It wasn't quite what I expected going into it. Like I, 
I didn't expect it to be like a big war movie like you did. <laughs> I thought it was just going to be a straight up war movie, and then it wasn't. <laughs> but it's, it's it was an interesting story. I thought it would focus more around like pirates, but it didn't. It was just kind of like it was just sort of about a plane duel. Yeah, the plane duel, <laughs> which I mean was fine. Like like no nothing against plane duels and the FBI chasing down Porco Rosso or something. <laughs> I don't know, fascists or something. It was, it was interesting. I would recommend it to people, but I don't know what. I, <laughs> I don't it know. It's very odd. Yeah, yeah. Y- you can tell it's very much a love letter to like the pilot movies from like the fifties and sixties. Yeah. Um, but it's it's really good. You know, it's not my favorite Miyazaki movie or my favorite Ghibli movie by any stretch, but. It's still really good. It's got a lot of good elements. At the end of this, I should go over what my Ghibli ranked (laughs) list lays out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I have one, too. I should go over those. All right. Then on the sixth, without... What did you rate? Oh, oh, yeah. I rated it four stars. I probably would have rated it four. I end up rating most of Ghibli's (laughs) movies four stars. I don't know why. Wow. I mean, an eight out of ten is good. Like, Spirited Away, five stars. Almost everything else I've rated four stars. <laughs> wow. All right. What did we watch um, after that, no, Micah? No. What did I watch What did after you that? watch after I that? I watched Green Lantern for the first time. Oh, my, oh, my. And, you know, it wasn't good, <laughs> but it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. This do you is, think it was going to be like a dumpster fire kind of? Yeah, it's got a 1.7 on Letterboxd. I mean, that's almost mul- a two. And multiple people I know have given it half star. Uh, so I was like, oh, boy, this is about to be awful and i mean it wasn't I, like like i must tell you again it wasn't good it wasn't good <laughs> but it wasn't awful i gave it two stars um the, st- the the screenplay just needed to be just thrown Burned. away <laughs> or restarted completely <laughs> or something like i don't know why they had like all of the stuff that they had in it i it just it just didn't make much sense it wasn't a good screenplay. It wasn't very good CGI. Uh, Ryan Reynolds was still a lot of fun, though. Uh, what about Taika Waititi? Micah? Taika Waititi. I didn't know he was in it, but, you know, his character <laughs> was pretty good. Wow. Well, from, like, the ten minutes I saw of this, I would probably have given it two stars. <laughs> yeah, two stars. <laughs> <laughs> then what did we watch? We, our, my Our. <laughs> um, we watched, on Netflix, baby, we were we were pressed to find a movie to watch <laughs> yeah, late one it night. Was, it was late, and we were like, we want to watch we're a like, movie. We want to watch a movie. And then, <gasps> and then we, uh, we ended up going on Netflix and turned on uh, Hail Caesar. Yes, we did. Which, uh, we've actually done an episode on Hail Indeed Caesar Indeed we before, have. That was, so that was a fun one. Go listen to that one. That was actually, I think... I, I think I'll still stand by my statement I made when, when that came out, that that's one of our best actual critiques in, in a podcast episode. Yeah. Um, Hail Caesar's fun, but it's not very good. Yeah, it's it's a fun time, but it, it, yeah, it's... <laughs> like, like, like I said, we talk about it a lot in the podcast episode, but, you know, for a late night, like, short watch... Oh, this, yeah, no, this is perfect. This has grown on me enough that I really <laughs> find it funny. <laughs> and I like just quoting along with it. Yeah, th- so. this feels like a movie that I'll be like, I actively, I know it's actively kind of bad, but it's not. It like, like I'll probably turn it on late one night with one of my kids and be like, heck yeah, bro. Here we Doyle, go. you're a communist too? You're a communist too. So it's communist. So it's com- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go go watch this if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, it's not uh, the Coen Brothers' best, but yeah, I give it I give it three and a half because I just like the half, the extra half is there because I like it. <laughs> wow, I, I yeah, I would have given it a three. Uh, then uh, I logged the short film, uh, the stunt double directed the stunt by double. Damien Chazelle. I logged it just because it was Damien Chazelle. Uh, <laughs> it, it was fine. Fine. I actually. I, I I don't know if this is a hot take at all or anything, but I actually kind of like uh, vertical filming. <laughs> like I wouldn't I would not choose it over horizontal. Don't get me wrong. I was about to say, Mikey, you're about to get kicked off. The I do. Not, I would not choose it any day over horizontal. <laughs> but I don't like I like if if vertical filming is used in a cool way. I actually really like how it can look. Um, this podcast is brought to you by Quibi. No, <laughs> you can go. No, no. no. <laughs> Zero percent endorse Quibi. Watch it. Watch it horizontal. It can go horizontal. Wow. But uh, yeah. Um. Should I stay? Should I say what I think about it? I mean, since sure, I've you seen can, it, since you watched yeah, it, yeah. I just time. I just watched it like 
a, a, like literally I was watching it and then our dad said, Hey, are you guys going to record today? And, and they we were, were like, like, Oh what? crap. <laughs> um, um, so yeah, I thought it was very much a one trick pony. I'm glad Damien Chazelle is getting work with high profile companies, but yeah, like, it's like, just not very it was, good. It was there as an ad for Apple. Yeah, for Apple. So jumping from that jumping off point, I wasn't expecting like it yeah. to be a masterpiece or anything. And it wasn't, uh, it was very much, uh, I really like the direction still, but it was very much like yeah. I was about to say, Damien Chazelle, he did a, he did a fine job directing it, but I think it was just kind of doomed to not be that good from the inception of it. So some of the production design was cool. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's besides true. besides the, the stupid, I don't know why everything <laughs> everything in the one uh, that goes bad, like the the skyscraper fall, everything in that timeline of stunt double, I think looks really bad. Like I don't post know. production and cinematography. Yeah, I don't know. I gave it three stars. If I had to rate it, I don't rate shorts. Yeah, I don't think it's actively bad. I, I think it's actually all right, but not not good, not yeah. great. All right, then what would we watch? We watched the ever classic, my first mm. Orson Welles film mm. that I've ever seen. Uh, F is for fake or F for fake. I, I woke up to this. Um... <laughs> And I missed, like, the first... He missed, like, the first 20, 20 minutes. minutes of it. <laughs> so I didn't rate it. I don't rate things that I miss, like, in like any longer than, like, five minutes of. <laughs> I think this is the day where I officially started not rating things. And because the other times, like, with the Ghibli movies and everything, I just didn't rate them. <laughs> but this is the day, like, where I uh, actually gave up rating things. Um, but I don't know. I really enjoyed this one. I don't the know. editing... From mm. what I saw of it, I, mm. I didn't like the writing on the documentary side of things. I thought it was fine. I thought it was it wasn't, very... wasn't perfect. I thought it was very self-important. Well, yeah, a little bit. But you kind of... Like, for, for a premise like this, I would almost think you have to be. And with Orson Welles being the way he is, I think it works pretty well. With mm. him being the host. I don't know. I just... It wasn't... It wasn't like something i would like go out of my way to watch it was a bunch of orson wells walking around in like <laughs> good well cinematographed cinemagra- shots of nothing but him standing there in his trench coat talking about how the the mist reminds him of the old days where con artists would sell off five paintings and aren't they the real artists in it all <laughs> wow dang <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I was not a fan. That's just I, to put it mildly. For me, the main thing that stood out about this was the editing. I had a hard time like actually looking away from this while we were watching this. So, um, oh, also a uh, uh, content warning on this. Oh yeah, one. a bit of a bit of a content warning. There is some nudity in this, which Robbie, which did I not was un- inform okay, us. I was unaware <laughs> when I turned okay. it on. So he's like, "Let's turn this on," and me and my mom were sitting there, and like, fine, whatever, turn it on. And then it just positive. We're like, "Wow, Robbie, what are you, what are you turning?" On? Okay, so uh, okay, <laughs> well, moving on. <laughs> moving on, we watched a good movie. Oh, heck yeah, we did. We watched School of Rock for the first time. Yeah, we've never Wait, seen on. it before. Hold on. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Micah, I'm you fine. sneeze You sneeze in the face of adversity. <laughs> I sneezed in my elbow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, School of Rock. School of Rock, Jack, Jack Black. Black. 2003. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Oh wait, 2003. Wow. <laughs> I think I think this is honestly the best Jack Black movie I've seen besides something like Kung Fu. Okay, Panda. I was about to say if you Besi- say it's better than Kung Fu Panda, I think something like Kung Fu Panda. I think you're wrong. <laughs> um, it was it was like really good. Yeah. Like, very surprising to me. Like what? I did not know what to expect, but this is not what I expected. It rocked, bro. It yeah, really did. It really did. <laughs> um, other than some scenes could have been a little tighter and the structuring could have been a little tighter, I think it's pretty much a perfect movie. Yeah, like, right? And it, and it gets you so, like, like in it, how do I put this? Uh, it's very, like, a very... It feels by very personal. The, by the numbers story structure. 
Oh yeah, yeah. But definitely. yet somehow it makes it not feel like because that's that was my worry about this was that it would into fall it. into the. It would feel oh, like no, a Disney things Channel are about to go of, bad. Yeah, like a Disney <laughs> Channel kind of like oh here's now here now things go wrong. Yeah, the then, like things are going well and then oh oh here comes the the bad sad yeah, part. Yeah, like, like <laughs> montage of them getting things done and growing and things going well and then boom sad part they all get mad at each other or something. This is actually the best execution of that sort of like. D miss like um what is it D something Ising uh plot what is what is that I called I don't know what you're searching for here I, I don't remember the word but like uh finding out uh some big revelation that every you've been living a lie kind of thing yeah like that like sort Rango. of plot <laughs> yeah like like Rango I think this is the best handling of that like from a screenplay perspective that I've seen but I haven't seen I I try to avoid those movies yeah. most of the time. You know, I would probably agree with that, and yeah, I also try to avoid those movies a lot because that that <laughs> like, like I said, that's uh, that's it can that get very annoying. N- usually annoys me, but it didn't in this one, and I was very nervous that it would. Uh, yeah, I thought I was gonna trip at the finish line, honestly, because the characters, the performances, uh, the music, mm, all yeah, good. The kids did better than I thought they would perform. Yeah, wise. for real. I was like, what? <laughs> I mean, there were some, like, some stiff performances, obviously, but they're kids. Bro, so. I almost cried, like, twice in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I rated it four and a half. Uh, I probably would have rated it four or four and a half. I'm not sure. I would have gone between the two. Probably four and a half. All right. Now it's time for the 2020 classic coming to you at <laughs> no! home in theater. No! The movie you've all been waiting for. No one was waiting for Highly it. anticipated. <laughs> Grab your Scooby snacks and sit down on your couch. <laughs> Why your couch? <laughs> because you're watching it at home. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Scoob. Scoob. Oh, Scoob. Oh, boy. No, Scoob. it's Scoob, Micah. Scoob. There's an exclamation Scooby point. Scooby it's Scoob. Do. I hate this movie. <laughs> Hate hate is a strong word. Hate is a strong. Word. It's the right word. It's the right word. <laughs> but <it's> still, <laughs> um, I'm I'm actually a, like not the biggest fan of Scooby Doo, but I uh, but I do like Scooby Doo. From what I've seen, I actually really like Scooby Doo. I'm kind of sad yeah. I didn't grow up with it. Yeah, we <laughs> we never like grew up watching Scooby Doo. And we've seen we've seen part. I've seen part of Mystery Incorporated now. Yeah, we've watched quite a bit but of Mystery Incorporated. Outside is, of that, I haven't seen hardly any Scooby Doo. I've stuff. seen like five episodes of the original, maybe. I really want to watch the original one. <laughs> uh, but man. <laughs> This was off. <laughs> it was really bad. Oh, yeah, and we've seen the live-action movie, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I really want to see the second one, because um, James Gunn was on that screenwriting credit. <laughs> so I feel like this. The we could do a whole episode on We this really movie. could. We should do an episode on Scoob sometime. We, we really should. Um, the concept from the beginning was bad. Bro, film opinion. Twitter was so hyped for this movie. Like, yeah, because like, the first stuff they released made it look like it was going to be a prequel. Yeah. And then it spends like 15 minutes with them as kids, and then boop, superheroes. Yeah, why is this a superhero why, movie? Why is it a super? <laughs> like, like, I get, I get, I think they were trying to set it up for a cinematic universe. Yeah, definitely but, they were. But, but no. no. question. Set up, set up the, their universe first. Set up Scoob first, and then. You, your title is Scoob. Give me Scoob. And we we don't even get the whole Mystery Incorporated team outside of like 40 minutes. Like right? 40 minutes they of this, split they are up together. almost immediately, and they do not get back together. Yeah, their until plots the end. do not converge until the end. And it's just, it. and you know, that's fine. If it was just going to be a Scoob and Shaggy story, that's fine, but it's not. It's a Scoob and Shaggy sidekick to superhero story. Yeah, it's so weird. Where Scoob is the MacGuffin. <laughs> it's, yeah, I, I don't get this. Like, I don't get who pitched this story, like, plot, and how it got through. <laughs> like, it doesn't make much sense. And then you take all of that. You take the structure and the story that makes zero sense... You pair it with two things. You pair it with voice casting that was more focused on big names than matching the characters. Because Oof. the heck is Zac Efron doing as Fred Jones? <laughs> okay, Zac, Zac Efron as Fred wasn't as absolutely terrible no, as I, I don't thought think, it was going to be. I don't think be. his voice matches that character. Like, I look at Zac Efron <laughs> voicing this. And I, like, like, I look at Fred and I hear Zac Efron's voice and I don't. Like, it doesn't me- mesh for me Someone at all. explain to me why Fred's eyes are so beady in this movie. 
<laughs> like everyone has like pretty big eyes, and then Fred's over here with like <laughs> two centimeter eyes. Like, the, well, anyway, you combine <laughs> you combine that voice casting with absolutely awful comedy. <laughs> oh my gosh! I don't think I I think I laughed at two jokes. Two. And it is supposed to be an animated comedy. Uh, like, Simon Cowell is in this movie. Okay, what the heck? <laughs> Nobody <laughs> cares about Simon Cowell anymore. Well, somebody cares. Like, we care, like, like. okay, but I'm saying public conscious-wise, we cared about Simon Cowell in, like, 2014. <laughs> like, that is the last time I remember everybody being, like, Simon Cowell. Oh, it's Simon Cowell. Cowell, yeah. And Simon Cowell has more screen time than <laughs> like then then he should like then i feel like it shouldn't be the, you take a drink every time simon cow of water of course of water. <laughs> every time simon cow is mentioned or referenced in this movie and you will have to go to the bathroom <laughs> <laughs> they, even, they even do like a, like 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 uh, okay no. the mask the mask thing was kind of funny but it didn't make much sense in the context no, of the movie <laughs> it was bad yeah no don't 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 <laughs> don't uh, yeah um if you want to go watch it and form your own, own opinion on it because maybe you'll like it more than we did hopefully you'll like it more than we did I hope someone I yeah, hope like, someone like, gets like, more enjoyment out of this than I do. Yeah, but I, gave I, it, I, I gave do it, not like it. I give it one star because it wasn't the uh, worst thing in the world. I would, yeah, I would have given it one. Also, what the heck was the joke about like the f bombs thing? <laughs> I was like, what? This does, <laughs> a, this is a kids movie, but B, that joke is completely out of place in this. Yeah, kids like movie. they didn't, even, they weren't even like. It would have been funny if that was like an ongoing joke where it was like supposed to be more edgy because it like superhero movie. That would have been funny if they would have thrown in more stuff like that. But they, it just comes yeah. out of nowhere, Falcon, and it never comes Falcon, up again. Like they're they're Falcon bombs. Use the, use he, the f bomb, and he ha- and he calls them f bombs, and I'm like, this isn't funny. Are the parents supposed to be laughing at this? Dang, bro, you got the whole you got the whole uh, twenty plus year olds laughing. <laughs> Uh, it was bad. Uh, anyway, also on the seventh, uh, you weren't here for this one. Whoa, watching uh, stuff without me, Micah. Yeah, you went to the store or something. Store. Oh yeah, I got some cool uh, p- uh, poster text. <laughs> now I hung up some posters. I watched, uh, I watched Batman Under the Red Hood. Under the Red. <coughs> Under the Red. Hood. I want to watch as many of the Batman animated movies as I can. I like them from what I've seen. Uh, but they, so far they haven't been great. (laughs) Like, wow. Um, like this wasn't bad by any means, but the structure of it was really sloppy. They can't all be the Dark Knight, Micah. Yeah, but like the structure of it was really (laughs) sloppy. Like the story they were trying to tell, I feel like all of the emotion was lost just because of the way they structured it. Oh, um, yikes! Which is like is a bad way. Like, it seems like, like a very like from what I've saw. Well, for, I saw like two scenes in it, and it seemed like it should be a very emotional movie. No, it should have been. It starts off, uh, and and I guess I spoilers. Guess, I guess I'll the... just spoil the movie. Spoilers, spoilers for under. Wow, the I've never seen it before, Mike. Uh, nobody cares. <laughs> wow. But no, if you look at the cast, it spoils what I'm going to spoil. Oh wow. <laughs> um. So like, it starts with with Jason Todd uh, Jason dying. Todd. Like he blows up, and that's that's the <laughs> he beginning. Blows and up. it has like these really like, wa- like rain falling, grave themed <laughs> opening credits after that, and you're like, oh, this is about to be a sad movie. And then it spends all of the rest of the runtime doing nothing, and at the end, the, the the gang gets back together, and it's supposed to be the big emotional climax, but it just feels like so random because they spent so much of the movie doing nothing like i get they were supposed to be trying to solve the mystery of who the red hood was but they weren't really like once (laughs) batman tried to figure it out at all it took him two seconds to figure out who the red hood was wow like the mystery there wasn't a mystery so it was just them kind of doing stuff but he's the world's greatest detective thank you yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah uh but like it it wasn't bad it was still definitely enjoyable i gave it three stars wow quite the controversial take uh did you watch anything else on the seventh um no i did not but Uh, (laughs) but we watched something on uh, the eighth that night uh, (laughs) that night hold on technically i have two more yes Uh, you do 
That's true. It was it was one by the time I started it, but I watched Eraserhead for the first Heyo, time. Heyo, first David um, Lynch movie, yes. Very, very odd movie. I didn't really know what to make of it at all watching it the first time. And a lot of it was, it's that thing where you're watching a movie for the first time that's not rated with your parents. Oh, yeah, just and, the nervousness of you never know what's going to come on the screen next. And it's next. not exactly... Like a clean concept for a movie, like the entire no, no, movie Eraserhead premise. is not not for kids. Don't don't show it to kids. The entire yeah, the entire movie <laughs> premise is not one for kids. So, like, I was just sitting there, like most of this movie, I was so just nervous. nervous. <laughs> like, please, um, please. <laughs> and and then it was just very. It's a very odd and abstract story. Uh, but I gave it three and a half the first time watching it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. It was. It's very, very, very weird. Uh, but like the production design was amazing mm. the cinematography was really good and the editing was really good I guess we'll talk about it more when yeah we'll talk yeah, about it more yeah. later uh, then at like 3 in the morning uh, oh no <laughs> we turned on that's never a good time to turn on something like a <laughs> blast from the past uh, a Brendan Fraser and uh, Alicia Silverstone or is that whatever. Christopher Walken? Yeah, and Christopher Walken what? movie. What? That's like a rom com <laughs> where okay, this is, is pretty, it's pretty funny. So like, uh, Christopher Walken and his wife. Uh, it's the '60s during all of the Cuban Missile Crisis stuff. What is it with Christopher Walken being in '60s, being, being in movies based in the '60s? <laughs> and and they think like a plane, a plane like crashes into their house, and and what? Christopher Walken's character had made like this entire secret. Uh, like completely secret because he was so paranoid. Uh, fallout shelter. What? And he locks him and his wife in there. And like that year, they they have a baby. And then like thirty five years, because that's how long the lock was set. What? Uh, it <laughs> pops open, and, and uh, Brendan Fraser pops out and he <laughs> goes uh, goes around. And then uh, they they think like a nuke still went off. So they're like, uh, better watch out. It seems like the radiation is gone, but there are mutant humans up on the surface. <laughs> wow, that's hilarious, um, Micah. No, it was awful. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know... Was it the peak of comedy, Micah? Uh, no, but it was three in the morning. and So it was like, the peak of comedy. And I like Alicia Silverstone <laughs> and Brendan Fraser. So, like, it wasn't awful. And you it doesn't deserve three and a half. You should have You should have just watched uh, Clueless. Micah. I mean, it doesn't deserve three but i gave it three i think it, i think it, in like a reasonable frame of mind it would do like a two and a half at the most <laughs> wow <laughs> but it was so, so it wasn't actively bad yeah okay so so what did you watch after that Mike? no that was that was my oh, entire oh. late <laughs> after that i tried to go to sleep but we ended up watching like an episode oh of Hell's God. kitchen after that how, how late were you up it was like four well, to be fair, that night I couldn't get to sleep, so I was up to like three o'clock in the morning. So, <laughs> but then what did we watch? What did we, we watch? Well, the very next day, if you can even believe it, we watched another HBO Max. Uh, uh, one might say a classic. Hmm. <laughs> one might say. Like, I don't think anybody would say that. <laughs> uh, we watched for the first time uh, the 2001 animated slash live action Ooh. Uh, film. A film with an E, of course. Yes. Um, Osmosis Jones. Osmosis Jones. For educational purposes, of course. <laughs> Solely educational purposes. <laughs> uh, man, this was this was bad. It kind of sucked. I'm not. This gonna was lie. bad on almost all fronts. <laughs> hey, I mean the the animation was pretty cool. Yeah, that's sometimes. True. You had some cool moments. Had it had animation. its had its had its moments. But but just nope. Oh my god. I'm good. This was the grossest film I think I've ever seen. Well. I, I wouldn't, think I wouldn't say that. I think that I would confidently say that this I is the grossest thing I've seen. I don't seen. know. Like Minority Report and uh, and um, what's name something? Eraserhead gross. are up there for me. Uh, I don't think Eraserhead is actively like gross. I mean, the chicken thing is a little <laughs> unnerving, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I don't know. Um, no, I, I don't think it was very good. Okay, this is wise. the most. This is the most. This is the grossest PG movie I've ever seen. Okay, okay, <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, uh, I gave it two stars. I, I don't have much to say about it. I would have given. Yeah, I would have given it two stars. It's it pretty. Wasn't good. It's pretty bad. I mean, it's not. 
like awful like i wouldn't watch it again but i could see maybe me as a kid liking this i would not watch it again solely for the experience of not watching uh a zit pop out onto somebody Ugh, that was so gross that was that was so disgusting like i almost <laughs> like i almost gagged watching watching this with lunch was yeah, the we worst watched decision this with we've lunch. ever made so. <laughs> the worst decision i've ever made but hey after uh, the very same day after this what did we watch we watched uh something that would have been much better suited for lunch <laughs> yeah really uh we watched the 2008 studio ponyo 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's Ponyo. Uh, this is a rewatch <laughs> for me. Um, who doesn't like Ponyo, man? I, I I had never seen it before, so I didn't know if I liked it. It's just a fun Studio Ghibli movie. It's exactly 100 minutes, too. Wow. What, what more could you ask for? Like, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you about this one. It's just fun. <laughs> it it's really cute. is. I Ponyo's, Ponyo's just a very cute movie. It's like a, it's a, it's like a rom-com with two five-year-olds. So. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's... It's interesting. Like, it's a very... Like, even for a Ghibli movie, this is odd. Yeah. It, like, structure, premise, it's it's very odd. Very odd, but I enjoy it. I think it's really cute. I ne- Yeah, this is the first time I'd ever seen it, and I really enjoyed it. <laughs> I'll probably buy it someday. Yeah, guess what I gave it? What'd you give it? Four. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I probably would have given it a four, too. See? <laughs> See? I do all these ratings like this, and you're like, oh, oh, oh but, it's tr- but it's accurate. Wow. Uh, then also on the eighth, we watched The Adjustment Bureau. The Adjustment Bureau. Bureau. Which wasn't very good. Uh, it's Q uh, Inception score here. No, no. Q Diet Inception. <laughs> Di- <laughs> diet Inception. Was this Diet Inception, Micah? This was like Diet Diet Inception. Diet uh, Matrix meets Inception. Sure. <laughs> It wasn't very good. It was like I met. I like Matt Damon a lot, and I like Emily Blunt a lot. But their chemistry was pretty. Yeah, good. Yeah, no, the chemistry was good. Uh, but that was about it. It's it's a cute movie. I I will say that it's boring. It's yeah, it's pretty boring. It's premise. They spend too much time trying to set up the actual specifics of the world building and everything. No, they spend too much time focused on his politics. Oh my gosh. They spend they spend too much time on a lot of things in this, this movie. This movie takes place over like a th- two, three, four years, five years, something like that. I don't know. Oh, yeah, 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 because they have the three-year time jump. I had forgotten. And it's just, it, it feels so like nothing is happening. Yeah, and it's then, it's rough. And I don't know. Yeah. I could see I could see someone being really into this movie though. Like this being one of your favorites if you in, really enjoy it, but I, I don't know. I can't see it. I can't see it. It was very great too. Yes, it was very great. <laughs> uh, I gave it two and a half though cuz it wasn't like bad. Oh, I would have given it a 3. I th- I thought it was I fine. Know. I was just very bored the whole movie. Uh then, then what, what did we watch? We watched uh well, since you had watched it without me. Yeah. Of course, with my permission. <laughs> but uh, I, I, we watched uh, Eraserhead. I watched it for the first time. And I rewatched it. 1977. This is a very interesting directorial debut, if I do say so. Yeah. No, am, no. I, am I allowed to say that? You're allowed <laughs> to say that. All right. <laughs> um, what to say? We, sh- we should do an episode on Eraserhead sometime. That, that would be an interesting episode. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed this. Like, I didn't know what to really expect because i've heard like i've heard people talk about david lynch's movies but i've never actually seen anything from a david lynch anything yeah like show or movie yeah and i didn't know what to expect and i really enjoyed it so it's very 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 odd yeah well but i can respect odd like he had a he had a definite vision for this movie and i think it does it really really well um the premise for it uh, is once again not exactly for uh, kids. But, yeah. <laughs> um, and it is very uh, graphically disturbing in a lot of parts. But yes, definitely. I really, really liked it. So, I don't know. I mean, I, like, if more David Lynch stuff is this clean, I'll watch it. <laughs> but I, yeah. think this is, I think this is his cleanest film, and uh, I don't know if I want to go any... Uh, more edgy than this you know? right like more edgy than this and uh, <laughs> okay um i gave it i upped my rating a little bit i give it four stars on this watch very, i enjoyed it a little bit I'm more i'm very tempted to i would be very tempted to give this five 
Mm. I think it executes its premise really, really well, but in reality, it would probably be a four and a half for yeah, me. Yeah, I don't know. Some things I don't think hit quite the way, like the dinner scene, I didn't, I didn't like very much. I could see this growing on me a lot. Like, yeah. this becoming one of my, like, late-night movies that I would turn on. <laughs> you know? This is not a movie that I'd watch before I go to bed, no. <laughs> what? Okay, so, guys, there's a stuffed animal <laughs> eraser head Okay, baby. I would buy that in a heartbeat. And Let me just so put it that way. <laughs> like, I don't care what you think. The eraser head baby is cute. You the eraser head baby is so mind. cute. I want, okay, Halloween, I'm going to get the eraser You're head gonna baby You're going to go plush. as the eraser head baby? Yeah. I know, I'm going to get the plush and just go as, uh, what is his name, Kevin? No. Henry. Henry. It's something generic. But, but, <laughs> but Robbie, if you go as Henry, you have to... Uh, well, <laughs> Henry. Oh, right. Uh, well, <laughs> just going to carry around a pair of scissors with you. Yeah, just carry around a pair of scissors. At the, uh, when, it, when, it, uh, when we go to the last house, I'll just chop open the stuffed, the stuffed plush. Yeah, that would be I, interesting. I wonder if there's one of those like electronic squeaker things inside, <laughs> inside of the eraser head baby where it'll cry when you, when you press it. No. That would be really funny. I actually thought there were... Okay, so to be honest, I actually thought there were some funny elements of yeah, no, it's, Eraserhead, which no, I didn't expect. No, it is funny. It's a funny movie. <laughs> da, da, da. Okay, Paul. Okay, Paul. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, I thought the I, cut, the hard cut to uh, he was sick. <laughs> he that was, was pretty. Sick. I, I thought that I was funny. You are sick. <laughs> I guess you are sick. <laughs> yeah, no, it's definitely funny and uh, disturbing, and it it has a um, I don't know, like I, the, I I highly respect this movie. Yeah, it that's... does it does exactly what it sets out to do. Yeah, in a in a uh, in a very entertaining way. All right, what was the last thing we watched? The last thing we watched. The Maltese Falcon. For the first time. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. And who doesn't like Peter Lorre? <laughs> That's true. Uh, I do like Peter Lorre. <laughs> um, I really, I really, really like this, but I think a lot of it... Is this based off of a book at all? Uh, I don't... Th- like, is it an adaptation? Because if so, so, I would just say everything I liked about it would be better in a book <laughs> <laughs> yeah i could see this being much better as a book um yeah i don't know this yeah, falls it is a book okay that makes a lot of sense this falls under uh the same category as film classics where i understand completely why it's important to the history of film like this is the definition of a classic film noir um but i just don't enjoy watching it kind of similar to casablanca which is another film classic where I understand why it's very, very important to the history of film, but I just do not enjoy watching th- it very much. I think much. it was a little slow, but I enjoy it because I really enjoy, like, the story. Um, but I don't know. It wasn't perfect by any means, and I don't know why on the cover on Letterboxd it looks like he's shooting water guns. <laughs> Wait, what? It looks there's oh a little my spray from the guns. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I just zoomed in on the poster and saw these little lines. That's weird. I don't know. I don't uh, know about I, that one. I gave it four and a half stars because I thought the screenplay was really, really well done. I do I do like the screenplay for this. And Once I, again, similarly to Casablanca, I, I think the I screenplay know. is really I, good. I enjoyed it quite a bit, but I don't know. I, I, I wanna watch it again to more collect my thoughts on it. I directed Annie directed that. Yeah, I know. Who know? Kinda crazy. <laughs> kind of crazy. Uh, and clutch powers. Clutch powers. We should do clutch powers. Oh no! <laughs> on an episode, Micah. That would be pretty good. Uh, but anyway, that's that's the last thing we watched. Yeah. Uh, it was a pretty good week. Is it? Yeah, I was about to say we got a bunch of new watches. We're gonna work on getting our way through all of the Ghibli films that are on HBO Max. Um, and yeah. Uh, I hung up my Howl's Moving Castle uh, original language poster on my wall. Yeah, which I'm kind of mad about because I like Howl's Castle more than him. <laughs> and he's like, no, you can't hang it up on your wall. <laughs> Is that what I said, Micah? No, you can't hang it up on your wall. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, my wall, my wall is now filled with posters of movies that I'm either indifferent to or uh, like. <laughs> Man, I really I, like the two that you're indifferent to besides Endgame. I really like um because i really love guardians of the galaxy of course um but hidden world eh. 
Hidden World was good. End bro. game. Eh. I don't um, know. Okay, okay. Let's let's finish the episode. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, to finish off the episode, uh, what are we doing? Go, we were gonna go over our Ghibli rankings. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally that, forgot. Shoot, and then that was gonna be it. <laughs> All right, shoot. Uh, let's see. You gotta pull up my list. It's actually mine is a Miyazaki ranked list, but uh, uh, so far all of the Ghibli films I've seen are Miyazaki <laughs> directed. So. <laughs> Time to time to get controversial on you guys. Whoa! I guess we'll go over yours first. Um, sure. Uh, and my number one slot uh, is Spirited oh Away. Oh my gosh, that's so controversial! <laughs> right? Like that's, that's probably, so brave. That's probably God. the most controversial. So brave. Thing I have to offer. How c- how could you uh, do? How could you say something so controversial and yet so brave? In the number two slot, <laughs> I have Porco Rosso. Porco Porco Russo. Porco Russo. <laughs> the Russo brothers, my God. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, then in the number three slot, I have Howl's Moving Castle. Howl's Moving Castle. Calcifer deserved better, Micah. <laughs> then in the number four <laughs> slot, I have Ponyo. 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 <laughs> uh, then in the number five slot, I have my neighbor Totoro. Oh. <laughs> and then in the number six slot, I have Kiki's Delivery Service. Who would have thought? And I think, I think my ratings go five, four, that, four, 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 that three is, and a half. That is very controversial, actually, having Totoro that low. Like, Totoro, they study in film school, bro. Uh-huh. Film school. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's five, four, 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 three and a half. Wow. That, that is actually, I, I would... Yeah, I disagree with that <laughs> with that ranking. <laughs> um, uh, but anyway, my list goes number one, Spirited Away, of course. That's my favorite animated movie, um, like, ever. Uh, my Neighbor Totoro is number two. I think it's just very, very solid. Uh, Kiki's Delivery Service, number three. I, I Do I have to defend Kiki's Delivery Service? Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of bad. I don't... It, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> It's not bad. I just okay, don't like wow. it as much as the others. Yes, I think Kiki's Delivery Service is definitely more solid than the ones I don't, below. I don't think. On this I think. List. I think you're wrong. Um, but number four, Ponyo, 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 Ponyo. You know, um, <laughs> and then number five, Howl's Moving Castle, which I think, uh, yeah, I'm very happy with this ranking. And then Porco Russo's underneath Howl's Moving Castle. That's the only one that I'm a little iffy on because I, I think Porco Russo and. Howl's Moving Castle are on about the same level. Um, if I could just like put them in the same spot, I would. <laughs> Which is why I put them next to each other up at, up at the top. Yeah, um, but yeah, no, uh, I I think they're all really good films, though. You yeah. sh- you should go watch all. Of no, them. I think I think I d- definitely watch any of those. Like I think they're all good. I uh, <laughs> I don't like Kiki's. Okay, if you've service. never seen Spirited Away, go watch Spirited Away, of course, because. <laughs> It's amazing. It's one of the highest rated films for a reason. It's it's really really good. <laughs> All right, and I'm getting really hungry. And it's you're like getting really 12 hungry. Oh and, shoot! Uh, uh, yeah, the the episode's gonna be coming out like probably an hour to two hours late. So sorry. Yeah, sorry about that, uh, guys. But luckily, the, yeah. See you then. Uh, yeah. Thank thanks. You for thanks for listening. listening. Uh, we'll be back uh, with Harry Potter next week, I guess. And then we might have somebody on the week after that. Mm. So look forward to that. And uh, g- 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 goodbye. <laughs> good afternoon, good evening, and good night, Micah. We didn't watch that movie. Gosh dang it.